In this video, we're going to be looking at 45, 45, 90 degree right triangles. So let's sketch that out, 45, 45, 90. And there are some special properties here that we really want to look at. So we know that there's a right angle here, it's 90 degrees. And we know that the other two angles are equal. And in fact, this is the only right triangle where this happens. Why? Well, think about it. We've got 180 degrees in the, in the triangle. We know that one of the angles here is 90 degrees. So what's left? We'll take 180 minus 90. That gives you 90 degrees. So there's only 90 degrees left to share in the triangle. And there are two angles that, that add up to that sum. So something plus something they're the same, equals 90. What do they have to be? Well, x and x is 2x. That equals 90 and divide by 2 on both sides, and we get x equals 45. So there is only one type of right triangle where the two angles are equal. That's a 45, 45, 90. Let's label that. And there's a really useful theorem to go along with this. Um, it's called the base angle theorem. I'm not going to prove it here. I'm just going to remind you of what this says. You might prove it in an, another video. So the base angle theorem goes, goes both ways. What it says is that if you have a triangle and two of the angles are equal, all right, that means the two sides across from those two angles are also equal. And it, but it goes the other way. It tells you if you have two sides that are equal, then the two angles across those two sides are equal as well. We're going to use the first interpretation, which says that if you have two equal angles, then the two sides are equal. And now this is where things start to get really interesting for 45, 45, 90 triangle. Now that we know that both legs are equal, we can use this to rethink a special case of the Pythagorean theorem. In this case, x squared plus x squared, the two legs that are equal, have to equal the hypotenuse squared. We can add the two x squareds to get 2x squared, and that equals h squared. So let's relate and figure out how is this leg connected to the hypotenuse, and how can we use the leg to figure out the hypotenuse and the reverse? What's the connection here? Well, I'm going to divide both sides by 2, balance the equation, divide both sides by 2. Here, 2 divided by 2 will cancel out to 1. We'll just have x squared equals h squared over 2. Now, let's say I want to solve for x here. I'll go this way. I'll take the square root of both sides. The square root of x squared is just x, right? The square root of a square is the inverse. The square root of this, we take the square root of h squared, that's just h, and the square root of 2, which we'll leave for now as the square root of 2. Over here, what if I wanted to find out how what, what the hypotenuse equals? Well, I'd go back a step uh, to this right here and multiply both sides by 2, so I get 2x squared equals h squared. Take the square root of both sides, and h equals the square root of 2 times x. All I did there was take the square root of both parts. The square root of 2 is, is 2, the square root of x squared is just x. So that tells me if I know what the hypotenuse is, excuse me, if I know what the, the, the leg is, I can multiply it by the square root of 2, and I'll get my hypotenuse. And here, if I know what the hypotenuse is, I can use it to find the square root, to find x by dividing by the square root of 2. And in fact, this relationship is often written like this. What we do is we manipulate this a little bit. We multiply h over the square root of 2 by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. This is just multiplying by 1. It's not really changing anything, even though it looks fancy, right? Because the square root of 2 over the square root of 2 is just 1 
anything divided by itself is 1. And this is called rationalizing the de denominator because we don't like to have the square root of 2 in our denominator. So this is called, I'll, I'll write this down up here, rationalizing the denominator. And this, what it does is it gets rid of the square root in the denominator. Why? Because, well, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is just 2, right? Because we're squaring a square root, multiplying it by itself, that undoes it and gives us 2. So up here, we're going to rewrite this whole equation. x is going to equal the square root of 2 times h divided by 2. And this is a way of using the hypotenuse to find the value of the leg. And let's look at one example. So again, we have, we have two relationships here. We have the leg. All right, instead of x, let me write leg, just to make it clearer. The leg is going to be equal to the square root of 2 times the hypotenuse divided by 2. Or I can write it like this the square root of 2 over 2 times your hypotenuse. And um, just, just building off of that, the hypotenuse, the other relationship we had, which just builds off of this, is equal to the square root of 2 times the leg we're looking at. And with these two relationships, I can quickly figure out what's happening on a 45-45-90 a degree right triangle. Here's how it might work. So let's say I know this is a 45, 45, 90, and I know that just, just one of the legs, because they're both going to be equal, even though I didn't draw up the scale, let's say one of the legs is equal to 6. Well then, right away I know what the hypotenuse is. I can use one of these formulas. Right? If I take 6, which is the leg, and multiply it by the square root of 2, I've got my hypotenuse. I'm using this formula right here. But I could just memorize this one and work it out. How could I do that? Well, let's say 6 is the leg, and that equals the square root of 2 over 2 times the hypotenuse. Let's say that's the formula I want to work with. I could solve for h. To do that, I multiply both sides by 2, and I get 12 equals, well, when I multiply this side by 2, I'm also dividing by 2, and that's gone. The square root of 2 times h. And now I divide both sides by the square root of 2. If I divide by the square root of 2 here, this cancels out. And now I get the hypotenuse equals 12 divided by the square root of 2. But you would never leave it like that. Um, because dividing by um, an irrational number just looks nasty. So h equals 12 over the square root of 2. So now we go back to that thing before. We rationalize. We multiply by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. And again, we can do that. It's okay to just multiply one side by this because we're really just multiplying by 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. But what this does is it gets rid of the square root in the denominator. So now we get the square root of 2 times 12 over what? Well, the square root of 2 times itself is just 2. And now we get this. Radical 2 or square root of 2 times 12 over 2. 12 over 2 is just 6, and we get 6 times the square root of 2, which is what we got before. I just wanted to show you that you can work with either equation. So again, if you know the leg, you can quickly find the hypotenuse. And that works the other way, too. If you knew the hypotenuse, you can quickly find the leg. Like If I said the hypotenuse is equal to 6 times the square root of 2, you'd say, well, what's, what's the leg? Well, well, here, you might just want to plug into this formula. Right? 6 times the square root of 2 is our hypotenuse. Plug it in here, and it'll cancel out to give you a leg that equals 6. And that's, I mean, and this is not something you have to memorize. If you just go back to what we said before and play with the algebra, you can see the relationship between the leg and the hypotenuse. And it's a really great one. Thank you.